HITCO Mining's special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich is brought to you by Vizsla Copper. Gloom, boom and doom. And that is just the weather. This is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich in Switzerland. Today I'm joined by Mark Farber, the publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom report. Mark, welcome to Kitco. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here in Zurich because this is my hometown. And for the first time in my life, I see it raining for three days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit of a coincidence we got the a title that uh, corresponds with the weather. Yes. But Mark, what, what is the Gloom, Boom and Doom report? It's a report which comes out monthly and I write it and it's about investments and uh, economic trends in the world and about unusual opportunities. So it's widely read and uh, we have a few subscribers. <laughs> and uh, the challenge is to find out something that is of interest every month. And it has to be different subjects because sometimes it's more a historical overview and sometimes there are philosoph philosophical <laughs> observations and sometimes economic geography and geopolitics. But of course it's about uh, how do people, investors, position themselves in the markets. Well, it's been a very interesting year. There's been a lot going on in 2023. What are some of the sort of key macro aspects that you've been writing about this year? Well, I think the key is that we have long-term cycles. And we have uh, cycles of accelerating inflation and then decelerating uh, inflation or disinflation or even deflation. And we have uh, trends and cycles of rising interest rates and falling interest rates and rising commodity prices and falling commodity prices. So it all varies. But my sense is that we had a peak in commodity prices in 1980 and the peak in interest rates in 81. Thereafter, we had a declining structure of both uh, inflation and interest rates uh, partly artificially steered by central banks, but we made a major low in, say, May, August uh, 2000. And where the 10 years Treasury yielded less than 0.6%, we went down to 0.57%. And now we are in an uptrend in inflation and uptrend in interest rates that will be interrupted from time to time by counter trend moves, such as we had in the 1970s. But the long term trend next 20, 30 years is for inflation to accelerate and for interest rates to move up. Although in the next six months, I think that interest rates will go down. So we have to distinguish between the short term trend and the long term trend. Now, gold has been, uh, <laughs> it's tried several times to break through that $2,000 per ounce. It closed October with a, a monthly level of just under $15 shy yes. $2,000 per ounce. Um, how do you see the, the setup for gold at the moment? Well, I've been advising investors to own gold and other precious metal, silver, platinum for the last 40 years. And I buy continuously every month some gold and in my asset allocation, gold is a, a side of real estate, stocks, bonds and cash, gold and precious metals, physical would be about 25%. So I have a large exposure to precious metals. I don't think that gold today is as cheap as it was in 1970, when it was at $35 an ounce. Uh, this I want to point out. I'm a Swiss. I live here. I grew up here. I lived uh, since 1970 outside Switzerland, but I come back. And so I can tell what the price level was, say, 50 years ago and what it is today. So let's say it's about up 10 times the price level. Gold, in the meantime, is up much more from $35 an ounce to close to $2,000 an ounce. So gold has actually been a good store of value for what it is. And uh, when I look at the commodities complex, say 
oil would be cheaper than gold or wheat, corn, soybeans, sugar, uh, even coffee is much cheaper than gold. Uh, but I think in uh, consideration of central banks whose function in the long run is to print money, we never forget that. A central bank exists to print money. In view of that, I think that gold and other precious metals are still a good investment from a long-term perspective and also from a safety aspect. Secondly, there are times when paper is more expensive than the physical. Say in real estate, real estate stocks, they swing more than the value of the real estate. In precious metals, it's the same. Sometimes precious metals stocks are at a significant premium to the physical. And sometimes they're at a significant discount to the physical. At the present time, I think that mining stocks, gold, silver, platinum, are at a discount to the underlying physical precious metal. So now is the time to buy essentially precious metal stocks. Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about stocks in a moment, but uh, let, let's stick on gold just for the time being. Um, gold is flirting with that $2,000 per ounce level. Yes. A lot of the economists that have presented here at this conference uh, expect gold to break out next year, maybe in the spring, maybe getting up to $2,500 per ounce. What, what's your view on what gold may do yes, next year? Yes, it's possible. I think that in general, uh, the dollar will weaken. I think it peaked out a year ago in October 2022. It went down sharply, then rebounded. And I think it's turning down again. I think the conditions in America are not as rosy as government statistics suggest. I think the economy is going into recession or is in recession already. For most people, the economic recession is a reality already because the wages have gone up less than the cost of living increases. Okay, now the, uh, the doom and gloom part of your report title sums up the feeling in many in the mining space and the gold equity space at the moment. How long do you think that will last and when we, can we get some, to some boom? Well, uh, my observation of, uh, in my life as an investor and uh, as a social observer and economist is that you should never buy anything where the mood is very optimistic because the expectations are exceeding the reality. On the other hand, if we talk about gloom and doom, uh, emerging markets are in a very negative sentiment phase, especially China and Hong Kong. So I would say there is an opportunity, say in properties in Hong Kong, you can buy the best property companies at a discount of 60% to asset value. The asset value will go down, but not by 60% in my view. The same with gold shares, I think, especially the South Africans are very cheap. So. M myself, I hold most of my precious metal uh, portfolio in physical. And I can explain later on why. But I also have uh, some gold shares. And I think purely from a portfolio management point of view, from a performance point of view, now is a good time to buy <laughs> mining stocks. And in your portfolio, do you prefer the big blue chip gold companies, the intermediates, the exploration companies, the developers, royalty uh, companies? Well, you know, the big diversified companies, they do exploration or they buy exploration companies and they produce uh, gold and silver. So I have both. But uh, from a portfolio point of view, I believe that financial institutions and the mindset of portfolio managers at Fidelity and all these large financial institutions is against gold because gold is honest money. And uh, say if we measure stocks against gold over longer periods of time, sometimes stocks underperform gold. So the portfolio managers don't like to talk too much about gold. But if they will be forced to move into the gold sector, they'll buy the big ones because of the liquidity. 
Small stocks don't have enough liquidity for Calpris and for Vanguard and for BlackRock and so forth. So they'll buy Barrick and Newmont and so forth. Okay. We're coming to the end of 2023. What do you think will happen next year? And what would you like to see happen next year? Well, in general, I think that central banks will move into... I want to express here a thought that is not widely shared. I don't think that central banks have tightened monetary conditions meaningfully. Uh, the absolute level of interest rates you look at, say, Turkey and Argentina, they have inflation rates of over 100% and interest rates at 100%. Is money tight? No. You can have uh, an increase in interest rates in the US and money doesn't become tight. If money was tight, the spreads between junk bonds and treasuries would be much wider. It hasn't widened much the VIX index volatility would shoot up, hasn't shot up. So I think that uh, the monetary policies are still inflationary at the present time. And that for the next six months, inflation will obviously cool down, but we will still be 30% higher in the price level in the world than we were in 2018, 2019. In that situation, what do you think is a, a healthy investment strategy for, for people? <laughs> what is healthy? Uh, I think that people must recognize that uh, they can't forecast the future. And uh, they should be diversified. And by diversification, I mean not just diversified... <laughs> by having an account at Morgan, uh, JP Morgan in New York, or Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs, and buy foreign stocks and buy gold mining shares, but to have physical diversification that you have some assets in Canada and some assets in India and some assets in Singapore and some assets in Dubai and so forth. Because we have a world that is becoming polarized between the wealthy and developed Western countries under the hegemony of the United States and their allies like Canada and Australia, UK and Europe. And then you have BRICS and BRICS countries that are becoming larger and have economically an increasingly large weight in the world and politically more influence. I mean, a hundred years ago, the British could send troops to China and force uh, uh, the Chinese to pay them <laughs> indemnity fees and uh, transfer Hong Kong to them. Nowadays, you think the British could go to China and demand anything? Nothing. And Liz Truss, she, she went to, wanted to lecture the Indians when she was foreign minister. The Indians laugh about her. The Indian economy has overtaken Britain in the terms of size. So you understand, we live in a different world and investors must realize diversification means to have also some money in this new world of emerging uh, countries, whether it's in the Middle East or Latin America and then uh, or Asia or Central Asia. And then you also have to consider some of my intelligent friends b believe that we have begun World War III. In World War III, where do you want to have your assets? The region that would be the least affected would be Latin America. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mark, because uh, that's where I live. Um, but I, I take on your point, yeah, US hegemony is arguably in decline. Chinese hegemony is increasing. The, the stage is set, and we're seeing that perhaps playing out in in the BRICS, as you mentioned, the calls for de-dollarization and a lot of the Asian nations increasing their, their central bank gold holdings. Yes. Um, how do you think this will play out next year? Well, I think that asset markets are not in a favorable position because uh, financial markets, uh, they will be plagued by, uh, in the corporate sector, I mean, stock markets will be plagued by declining corporate earnings. In Asia, it's already visible. 
And uh, in terms of currencies, I think the dollar will go down, precious metals will rise, and the bond, the bond market will rally for a while. Say, if you look at TLT, the high was 170, it's now at uh, 87, 86. I think we can rally to around 110. So investors uh, should do well by being out of the US dollar, in my view. And the emerging markets, they have never been this low since 1973 vis-a-vis -vis the developed markets. So I would look at investing some money in emerging economies. Okay, well, we'll certainly have to get you back uh, next year and see how things progress. <laughs> yes. Mark, thank you very much I for joining so us today. Too, yes. Thank you. And this is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich in Switzerland. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining's special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich is brought to you by Isla Copper.